learners. This is Silver Light Education. As you know today, we are going to complete our first unit of Block 1, which we are start in previous class. Now, Super Group Sarclade. Sar stands for Stromenopiles, equals Heterocanta, Alveolata, and Rhizaria. Clade is, Biology Systematics, a group of animals or other organisms derived from a common ancestor species. The sarclade has been proposed recently based on the whole genome DNA sequence analysis which has revealed that the three major groups of protists viz. Stromenopiles, alveolata, and rhizaria can be placed together in a supergroup. Stromenopila, unranked members of this group have tubular mitochondrial cristae. They may be flagellated having two different flagella, one long and hairy and the other short and smooth and both inserted at the anterior end. This clade includes brown algae, yellow algae, diatoms that collect energy from plastids. Alveolata, unranked have membrane enclosed sacs or alveoli under the plasma membrane. They include both photosynthetic and heterotrophic protists. The three important groups of alveolates are Phylum ciliophora, Phylum dinoflagellata, and Phylum apicomplexa. Phylum ciliophora Ciliates are named because of the cilia that cover them. They are present in fresh water and marine habitats as well in moist soils. They are free-living, parasitic and symbiotic. The most common ciliate used as study material in labs is paramecium. Phylum dinoflagellata Most of these are ocean-dwelling plankton, though some are freshwater dwellers. The cells are naked or typically reinforced by cellulose plates. Phylum apicomplexa. All the species are parasitic and specialized for living and reproducing in animal tissue, the infectious stage is called sporozoite. Most apicomplexans have elaborate life cycles involving one or two hosts. Class Gregorinia, mature gamons, individuals that produce gametes, are large, extracellular parasites of digestive tract or body cavity of invertebrates, life cycle with one host. Example, Monozystes and Gregorina. Class Coxidia, mature gamons small, typically intracellular life cycle with two hosts. The best known example, Plasmodium, Fig 1.7, that causes malaria, lives both in the mosquitoes and humans. Another important disease causing apicomplex in Toxoplasma gondii is a parasite of cats and can infect humans. Rhizaria, unranked many amoebas belong to this group. These are protozoans that move by means of pseudopodia and differ from other amoebas by having thread-like pseudopodia. Phylum Circozo, large group of amoeboid and flagellated protozoans that have no common body plan that feed using thread-like pseudopodia. Found in marine, freshwater, and soil ecosystems. Many are parasitic on plants and animals or other protists, they may be mixotrophic and at least one, Polynella chromatophora is an autotroph and an example of a eukaryotic lineage that obtained its photosynthetic apparatus from a cyanobacterium, Fig.1.8. Phylum foraminifera. Phylum foraminifera or forums are named for their porous shells called tests that are hardened with calcium carbonate. These shells may be many-chambered, multilocular, or single-chambered, unilocular. The chambers are separated by partitions with small apertures or foramina hence the name foraminifera. The living organism fills all the chambers in the shell. Phylum radiolaria. These have delicate, intricate, symmetrical internal skeletons that are generally made up of silica. Mostly planktonic, marine, radiolarians have a body divided by a central capsule that separates the inner and outer zones of cytoplasm. Supergroup unicantat. Unicantat includes protists that are closely related to fungi and animals. These protists form two large groups. Amoebozoa, unranked, and Apistocantat. Amoebozoa, unranked this group includes many amoeba species that have lobe-shaped or tube-shaped pseudopodia. Amoebozoans include the slime molds, tubulinids, and entamoebas. Class Myxogastrida, this group includes the plasmodial slime molds that grow to form a mass called the plasmodium. Class Dictyostelida, this group includes the cellular slime molds. 
class tubulinia, this group makes a large and varied group of amoebas that have lobe or tube-shaped pseudopodia. The most well-known example is amoeba proteus, see fig 1.12. Class Archamoebia, most amoebozoans are free-living. However, individuals of genus Antamoeba are parasitic on vertebrates and some invertebrates. Apistocanta, it is a diverse group of eukaryotes that includes the animals and fungi as well as protists that are more closely related to fungi and animals than to other protists. Nucleariids, they are a group of amoebas with phyllopseudopodia, fig 1.14a, that feed on algae and bacteria and DNA analysis suggests that these protists are closely related to fungi suggesting that fungi may have arisen from similar ancestors. Coenoflagellata, small group of protists found in both marine and freshwater environments and are considered sister taxon of animals. They are the closest living relatives of sponges. Structural organization and function. In this unit till now we have learned about the broad classification of animal-like protists or the protozoans, as we will continue to call them. In this section we will discuss their structural organization and functions. These eukaryotes form a group of more than 90,000 named species of single cellid organisms. Half of these species are known only as fossils. They occur in all habitats, marine, freshwater and terrestrial, including soil. About 25% participate in symbiotic associations and many are the causative agents of important human diseases including malaria, the most deadly human parasitic disease. The unicellular level of organization is the only character which is common to all members of protozoa. In all other respects they display extreme diversity. The great majority of protozoans are microscopic. They range in size from 1 micron as in the case of the planktonic micromonas to a few millimeters like some amoeba species and ciliates and exhibit all types of symmetry and great range of complexity in their microanatomical structure. Let us now consider in this unit the ways in which the single cellid protistan body plan is used by its protozoan members to become capable of adapting to varied habitats. Body form. The protozoan body is usually bound only by the cell membrane called plasmalemma. In some protozoans, in ciliates, the rigidity and the flexibility of the body is maintained by a cytoskeleton located immediately below the cell membrane which together with it forms the pellicle. The cytoskeleton is composed of filamentous proteins, like actin, microtubules, or vesicles or a combinations of all three. A large number of protozoans also secrete certain organic materials like gelatin, cellulose, or tectin on the outer surface of their plasmalemma forming a kind of exoskeleton. Some secrete an organic matrix containing silica or calcium carbonate particles and often foreign bodies like sand particles get entangled with the matrix to strengthen the external layer and provide protection. These chemicals organize to form theca, fig 1.15a, lorica or loose covering, Fig 1.15b, or shells as seen in foraminiferans, Fig 1.15c. Shells or tests are in loose contact with the cell body and have one or more openings through which the protozoan is able to protrude itself. Cytoplasm can be distinguished as ectoplasm and endoplasm. Ectoplasm appears transparent under light microscope and bears the base of the flagella or cilia. The endoplasm appears granular and contains the nucleus and cytoplasmic organelles. The ectoplasm is more rigid and is in the gel state of a colloid while the endoplasm is in the sole or more fluid state. Look at this figure. Nutrition All types of nutrition occur in protozoa. Some protozoans synthesize their own food from inorganic precursors, carbon dioxide, nitrates or ammonium salts, and hence are autotrophic, e.g. chlorophyll-bearing flagellates. Others are heterotrophic as they depend on organic and inorganic raw materials from the environment for their food. Heterotrophs have varied food habits. Some feed on soluble organic nutrients from their environment and are termed saprozoic or osmotrophs, e.g. parasitic protozoa. Still others are holozoic ingesting rigid or solid organic food or phagotrophs that is, they may ingest solid food of plant or animal origin. 
they may also feed on bacteria or other small protistins which are ingested whole, and digest them within food vacuoles. The food particle is then enclosed in an intracellular membrane bound vesicle the food vacuole or phagosome. The food is digested by the action of enzymes contained in lysosomes and the undigested material is thrown out from the body by exocytosis. The digested material is absorbed by the cell. In most ciliates, many flagellates, protozoans that bear flagellum, and apicomplexins the site of phagocytosis is a definite mouth structure called the cytostome. Flagellates may have a temporary cytosome usually in a characteristic position or the cytosome may be a permanent specialized structure. Look at this figure. Osmoregulation and excretion. Osmoregulation is the process of maintaining salt and water balance, osmotic balance, across membranes within the body. Osmoregulation or water balance in protozoa is accomplished by contractile vacuoles. One to several contractile vacuoles may be present within the cell which may or may not have fixed sites in the cytoplasm and may have contributory canals or other vesicles opening into it. These are water and ion regulating structures, acting as pumps to remove excess water from the cytoplasm. All freshwater protozoans have functioning systems of contractile vacuoles whereas, marine and parasitic forms have these less frequently. Excretion the process by which animals rid themselves of waste products and of the nitrogenous byproducts of metabolism. Excretion of metabolic wastes is done almost exclusively by diffusion. All protozoans are ammonotelic i.e., the end product of their nitrogen metabolism is ammonia, which is readily diffused in the surrounding medium. The contractile vacuoles may differ in complexity in various groups of protozoans. In Amoebae the vacuoles are carried around in the cytoplasm. Small vesicles join them emptying their contents into the vacuoles till the vacuole joins the membrane emptying its content to the outside, Fig 1.17. Look at these figures. Respiration. Because protozoa are small, they have a large surface area in proportion to their volume. This facilitates gas exchange which involves acquiring oxygen for cellular respiration and elimination of carbon dioxide produced as a byproduct. Some parasitic protozoans are capable of anaerobic respiration, for example monocystis. Metabolic wastes like ammonia and carbon dioxide diffuse out of the organism. Mechanism for response. Protozoans are sensitive to many stimuli like touch, temperature changes, light, chemicals etc. Though the exact mechanism is not understood but amoeba can constantly change their protoplasmic mass and respond to stimuli as well as conduct them. Cilia and flagella are highly sensitive to touch. One special sensory organelle found in photosynthetic flagellates is the light sensitive eye spot or stigma which is located at the base of the flagellum. The stigma is often cupped shading the light sensitive portion form one side. Reproduction Both asexual and sexual reproduction occurs among protozoa. The most common form of asexual reproduction is binary fission. In binary fission the nucleus divides mitotically to produce two nuclei that are distributed to two similar sized individuals when the cytoplasm divides. During cytokinesis the cell organelles also duplicate so that both individuals have all the organelles required to continue life. Depending on the group of protozoans, cell division could be transverse or longitudinal, Fig 1.19. Other forms of asexual reproduction are budding during which mitosis is followed by formation of a much smaller individual than the parent cell. Multiple fission or schizogony occurs when a large number of daughter cells form from the division of a single protozoan. In this process multiple mitotic nuclear divisions take place in a mature individual. When a certain number of nuclei are produced, then cytoplasmic division results in the separation of each nucleus into a new cell. This is seen typically in apicomplexans, malarial parasite. Sexual reproduction entails the formation of haploid gametes by meiotic nuclear division in some protozoans that fuse with another haploid gamete to form the zygote that restores the diploid chromosome number. 
In some groups the first division after zygote formation is meiotic resulting in haploid individuals that continue to divide mitotically up till next zygote formation. Ciliates have a special arrangement for sexual reproduction known as conjugation, see Fig 1.20. The general features can be seen in Paramecium sp which has one macronucleus and one micronucleus. Two individuals ready for conjugation unite at a point where a cytoplasmic bridge forms, a. The macronucleus disintegrates and the micronucleus divides twice to form four haploid nuclei, b. Three of these disintegrate and the fourth one divides again, c. To form a stable pronucleus, female, and one migratory pronucleus, male. The migratory pronuclei of each are exchanged, d. The conjugates separate and the pronuclei fuse to form the zygote in each individual, e. After several post-conjugation divisions, four daughter cells form from each exconjugant, f and g. The daughter cells have one macronucleus and micronucleus thereby, restoring the normal nuclear complement in each cell. Look at this figure. Locomotion in protozoans. Most protozoans actively move to find food, for finding protection and as response to stimuli. For example, most unicellular forms swim, the slime mold Dictyostelium discoidium is a predator that can crawl over a substrate in search of food. These movements are caused by using either cilia or flagella or by flowing cytoplasmic fingers called pseudopodia. Movement is another example of the diversification that occurred within the different eukaryote lineages. Let us look at the various structures used by protozoans for locomotion. Structure and function of cilia and flagella. Cilia and flagella are microscopic contractile filamentous organelles that are really extension of the cytoplasm which help to create food currents and help in locomotion. The ultrastructure of cilia and flagella is remarkably similar among all organisms in which they occur, from protozoans to vertebrates, suggesting evolution by common descent. Although modifications are found in some organisms, they are always cylindrical arising from a basal body known as the chintosome. Within the cilium or flagellum are several rods called microtubules composed of a protein called tubulin. This protein is similar to myosin which is the metazoan protein of muscles. A cross section of the chintosome in the region below the outer body surface shows that the microtubules are arranged in nine groups in a ring with three microtubules in each group known as a triplet, Fig 1.21. Instead of a thin filament, a pair of dynean arms project from each a microtubule of one group towards B microtubule of the adjacent group. A complex of filaments or kinetodesmata link the basal bodies of the cilia in ciliate protozoans. Look at this figure. Structure and function of pseudopodia. Pseudopodia, false feet, are flowing cytoplasmic protrusions of the cell causing a moeboid movement. They also function in feeding. In protozoan pseudopodia exist in several forms, Fig 1.23. The most familiar are lobopodia. These are large blunt extensions of the body containing both ectoplasm and endoplasm. Thin extensions of the body are known as philopodia. These are often branched containing only ectoplasm. Repeated branching and rejoining of philopodia to form a net-like mesh is known as reticulopodia. As the amoeba cell body throws out one or a few pseudopodial lobes, a temporary rear end or uroid is pulled along. The central, more fluid protoplasm, the endoplasm flows towards the extending pseudopodium, the advancing tip of which appears as a thicker gel, the ectoplasm. This is known as the hyaline cap. Look at these figures. Thank you. If you like this video subscribe this channel and press the bell icon. For more units, share this playlist to your friends. Unit, 2, coming soon.